In this video, I will be teaching you how to draw the graphs of exponential functions. So I'll start us off by quickly sketching the graph of y is equal to e to the power of x. So let's get our axes, or axi, or axi. This is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis. And the graph of y is equal to e to the power of x will look something like this where this point over here is equal to 1 and this line gets closer and closer to 0 but never actually reaches it. So now I'll explain to you why this graph looks the way that it does. So over here where this is our point where x is equal to 0 or our y-intercept we see that if we plug 0 into our equation so e to the power of 0 we get the value of 1 hence we have our value of 1 over here. And on the left side, for our negative values of x, our negative values of x, as x gets smaller and smaller, the value of y or e to the x gets closer and closer to zero. So it approaches zero. And this is because when we're taking our value for e to the x, as our value of x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, the value of e to the x comes closer and closer to zero. And that's because we know that any number to a negative power, let's say e to the power of negative a, is the same thing as 1 over e to the power of a. And as the value of a becomes more negative, or as this value increases, this becomes closer to zero. Therefore, over here our graph is approaching zero, but it never actually touches it because you can't take a power, or you can't take e to any power and obtain the value of zero. Now, on our right side, or in our increasing, for our increasing values of x, this goes on and on and on and on forever until it, an infinitely high value. So it basically just goes on until infinity. And that's because when we're taking e to the x once again, as our value for x becomes higher, the value of e to the x becomes higher. So that's about it for what you need to know about the graph of y is equal to e to the power of x. You need to know three things that its y-intercept is over here or at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. On the increasing x-axis this goes on until infinity and this approaches, on the, on the decreasing x-axis, it approaches zero. Yeah, and that's basically all you need to know about the value of y is equal to e to the power of x. And understanding this, or understanding why the graph of y is equal to e to the power of x is the way that it is, it allows us to set a base for what the rest of the graphs of different exponential equations look like. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's say that I think this is an example from the textbook. We want to graph our function of y is equal to three times, three times e to the power of negative two x minus five. Now, this looks slightly different from what we had. Over here, we only had e to the power of x, and in our new equation, we have e to the power of negative 2x multiplied by 3 and subtracting 5, so it's a bit different. So when we're solving exponential equations, there are four things that we always want to keep in mind or that we want to look for in order to draw our graphs. And those are the x-intercept, the y-intercept, so this is the point where it meets the x-axis and the point where it meets the y-axis, and we want to find the value of y as x approaches infinity or as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we also want to know the value of y as x approaches negative infinity or as x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so now that we know how to draw the graphs of exponential equations, that's, let's apply that to the question that we have over here. So let's draw our axis or axi axis once again. We have our x axis and our y axis. 
So our first step is to find our x-intercept or the point in our graph where y is equal to 0. So that's just algebra for us. So we solve for 0 is equal to 3 times e to the power of negative 2x minus 5. 5 is equal to e to the power of negative 2x or 3e e to the power of negative 2x. 5 over 3 is equal to e to the power of negative 2x. Take ln of both sides. So let's say ln of 5 over 3 is equal to ln of e to the power of negative 2x. We can move, arrange, rearrange this using the power law. So negative 2x times ln of e. And we know that ln of e is equal to 1, so we can just write times 1. So ln, you get that ln of 5 over 3 divided by 2 is equal to our value of x. Sorry, I don't have the software on my computer. My on-screen calculator doesn't have ln. So I'll just tell you what this is. We get that x is equal to negative 0 0.225 or a negative 0 point, I'm sorry, negative 0 0.255. So we can mark that point over here where y is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 0 0.255. So now our next step, as we know, is to find our y-intercept. We simply plug in the value of x to be 0. So we get y is equal to 3 times e to the power of negative 2 times 0 minus 5, which is e to the power of 0 times 3. So e to the power of 0 is 1. We get 3 minus 5, which is equal to negative 2. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So we mark that over here. This is the point negative 2. And our next step is to find the value of y as x approaches infinity. And what this essentially means is we want to find what's happening to our value of y as x becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So to do that, let's look at our equation. In our equation, we have y, y is equal to 3 times e to the power of negative 2x minus 5. And let's just look at this part of our equation for now. So e to the power of negative 2x. In this equation, as x becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, the value of our power of e becomes smaller and smaller and smaller or more negative. So let's say if we wanted to take e to the power of negative 2 times 1 million bajillion, we would get a very low number. We'd get 1 over e to the power of 2 billion bajillion and that would be very close to 0. So as our value of x approaches infinity, our value of e to the power of negative 2x approaches 0. But we also have to remember the rest of our equation, which is the 3 and the 5. So as this number, or as this, as this part of our equation approaches 0, we get that 3 times a number approaching 0 minus 5. This is equal to negative 5. So our function as a whole, or y, approaches the value of negative 5. This means that it gets very, very close to it, and the higher the value of x, the closer it gets, but it never actually reaches it. So let's just quickly sketch this. We have our value of minus 5 about here, and let's make a line saying that our value of y approaches this. Now the third and final step in our in solving for our graph is finding the value of y as x approaches negative infinity. And we'll do a pretty similar thing to what we did up here. We'll take our equation once again, y is equal to 3 times e to the power of negative 2x minus 5. And 
as x approaches negative infinity, we will once again box this off just to make it a bit clear. So our value of e to the power of negative 2x will become bigger and bigger and bigger. So this will increase. And we know this because any negative number times any other negative number is a positive number. Therefore, we're taking e to an increasingly higher power. So if we look back at our whole equation, we get y is equal to 3 times a number approaching infinity minus 5. The minus 5 and the times 3 don't really do anything because, well, infinity is infinity. So we get that as x as x approaches negative infinity, our value of y approaches infinity. Now let's take this back to our graph. So for our function or for our graph, we know that it passes through this point over here and on the x-axis and it pa passes through this point on the y-axis and our value approaches negative 5 and never reaches it and it goes on infinitely high or infinitely long on our negative x-axis. So when we sketch it, it will look something like this on our positive side. It approaches the value of negative 5 and never reaches it. And on our negative x side, it just goes on and on and on for infinity. And this would be our final answer to our question. And there may be domains stated in the question. So, and so if there are, you simply have to plug those in and find out what the points on either end of our function will be.